Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining class. There's only uh, three of you who've joined class. What happened to the rest? Okay, I think we'll just wait for uh, a minute. Good morning, good morning, Kennedy. Just wait for a minute or two for the others to join, and then we'll begin class. Can one of you uh, lead us in prayer, please? And I'm sure by then uh, others will join as well. Anyone can lead us in prayer? Sri Kumar, can you lead us in prayer, please? Good morning. Sri Kumar, can you lead us in prayer, please? Okay, uh, I don't know what is keeping Sri Kumar back, but anyone else can lead us in prayer? Anyone quickly? Yeah, yeah yes, Pastor, I can pray. I can pray. Sorry, there was a problem with the microphone. So. Oh, no problem. And, Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Richard, Father, we, uh, we thank you and praise you for this uh, this wonderful day uh, which you have given to us, Lord. We, we come together, Father God, and with one heart, with one faith. And we are seeking your wisdom and, Lord, your understanding and your grace, Father God, to understand everything what we are going to learn today, Father. We pray that, Father God, speak to us through your wisdom, through your Holy Spirit through the spirit of excellence, your Father God, and fill us with your grace to understand. And every word what is going to be received, O oh God, let it enlighten our understanding, let it enlighten our hope, let it enlighten and strengthen our faith, O oh Father God. We surrender everything into your mighty hand, we especially surrender the servant of God into your mighty hand. Use your vessel, O oh Father God, mightily, and prepare our heart that, Father, every, every word what we are going to receive, let it not be a vain word for us, but let it be Lord, master the seed from the heaven and let be able to store it in our heart so that it can be a blessing for the nations and it can bring fruitfulness to the others like for God. All the glory, honor and praises belongs to you. In Jesus' most holy and majesty and we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sri Kumar. Uh, so uh, the last two classes that we had, uh, we began looking at the importance of ministering to children and then we began looking at the biblical uh, basis or the mandate the command uh, for children's ministry uh, we last class we looked at, at uh, that god has a plan for children his plan includes family uh, the importance of teaching uh, scripture to children uh, children are an integral part of the covenantal community uh, they're also part of the corporate worship that is part of the prayer and worship, uh, praise and worship, prayer, repentance, uh, public reading of scripture and salvation. Uh, so we saw that, uh, you know, since children in the Old Testament are, uh, were part of the covenantal community, so uh, the church today, which is the house of God, the body of Christ, um, uh, the covenant community uh, in Christ uh, should also include, you know, children in various aspects of church life. Uh, they should be trained and taught how to, uh, you know, meaningfully participate in every aspect of the uh, of the life of the church. Okay, so moving on, uh, we look at, uh, you know, ministering to children was a priority for Jesus. And because it was a priority for Jesus, it is a priority for uh, the church today, priority for each one of us uh, to minister to these young lives. Uh, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, can one of you please read uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, please? Anyone? Matthew chapter 19, verse 13. Right, Pastor? Yes. Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hand on them and pray. 
the disciples rebuked the people. Yes, so here we see that, you know, the people brought um, uh, little children uh, to Jesus uh, for him to place his hands on them and pray for them, uh, but the disciples uh, rebuked uh, them. Uh, the disciples, why do you think the disciples rebuked uh, the parents for bringing their children? Any idea? Any idea why the disciples rebuked Maybe the parents? Maybe they thought, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. Maybe they thought they, they are uh, disturbing Jesus' busy, busy schedule and ministry, like a hindrance to them. OK. Him. Thank you, Rupa. Anyone else? Uh, maybe they thought that it is not so important uh because they are children and they may not know the truth maybe that is one of the reason i think so thank you yes maybe you know uh children are not important uh you know what will they understand uh jesus spoke in parables and uh, they themselves were not able to understand uh so how would uh, you know children uh understand okay Anything else? Ma'am, if we read the context, Jesus is talking about marriage and divorce. Some very heavy stuff was being discussed there and children came and maybe the people felt like uh, more of distraction for them than Jesus. So they may have rebuked. Okay. Uh, Stavni is uh, turning to be uh, a good theological student, uh, looking at the background, studying the background, the context, and trying to understand the, the passage and interpret <laughs> this passage in the light of the context, uh, the background. Very good. Yes. Uh, Kennedy, yes, they, uh, they, they sense that they were a distraction. Okay. But we see that, you know, uh, uh, just see. just a minute okay uh but we see that you know the disciples basically felt they might have been a distraction they wouldn't have understood uh what jesus was saying it was not for them uh they were too young uh and also maybe they thought that you know uh, children were not a, 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 a age group that you know should be ministered to uh but what was Jesus' response? Well, Jesus wanted to minister to them. He made time uh, to minister to children. And, you know, because children in his eyes, in his sight, uh, were precious. He loved them. Uh, and he wanted uh, children to be brought uh, to him. So, um, you know, he says in, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Uh, can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. It's on your screen as well. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. So Jesus says, you know, don't hinder the children from coming. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, two uh, synonymous uh, uh, terms, kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven, belongs to such as uh, these. Let's look at uh, um, Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. Can one of you read that, please? And, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. So Jesus is saying, unless you you become like these little children, you will never enter the kingdom of uh, heaven. Uh, Susan says they thought, uh, yes, it's, uh, you know, the, the people thought that uh, children don't need uh, Jesus. Uh, it's only the adults or the grown up uh, who need uh, Jesus, who need to be taught about him. Yes. What did uh, Jesus mean? Uh, when he says this, uh, what he said in John, uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, and Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. What did he mean by saying that, you know, unless you become like, a li like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven? Any thoughts on this? Yes, Asha? Um, 
because the children have more faith and they're like the children are innocent and they're ready to like take anything as a parents or anyone says because they're so easy to thank you yes uh, they have uh, you know they're talking about childlike faith childlike trust they just uh, uh you know uh they just receive anything or everything that you tell them um uh, if you tell them that you know uh if 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 you're if you're uh, uh telling your children that you know they have to eat spinach uh you know and they, they ask you why should i eat spinach and they love maybe maybe the child likes cartoon and says because popeye likes uh spinach then the child will just start eating spinach or if why is the if the child asks you why is the grass green and you say god made it green they'll just believe you at what you say but uh, i'm sure if you say the same uh, thing to a child who is in grade 8 9 and 10 they'll say uh, it's because of photosynthesis and blah 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 and explain science to you and everything okay so uh, like uh, yes children are always believing trusting um, they always take you at uh, 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 whatever you say they just take you at what you say and tell them they uh, just believe anything and everything that you uh, tell them okay so here jesus is basically saying that you know he values their uh, their nature their character their childlike trust and their faith their total um, dependence on their parents they just abandon themselves so to say you know to their parents whatever their parents say they just believe they just do uh, so you know he's saying that uh, you you require this childlike faith this childlike trust uh, total dependence on uh, God your father abandoning yourself totally uh, totally surrendering uh, totally independence uh, to the father's will to doing what the father wants you to do and then he says you know when you have this kind of nature or character you know um, you will enter the kingdom of heaven so he's just upholding the childlike approach uh, to life or uh, every aspect of life which is an essential quality uh, for us as believers uh, to be part of the kingdom of god or the kingdom of uh, heaven so just like parents uh, felt that children need uh, jesus uh, you know uh, or they just uh, as they felt that they they uh, the children also need the touch of jesus or the jesus to minister to them uh, you know we also see the need in today's world that children need uh, uh, help you know uh, they need help in learning how to uh, go through or navigate uh, or walk through today's world uh, the life they're living today um, and they need more of jesus because they have a long life to live they have many days ahead uh, of them you know and uh, uh, we as adults uh, even as we need so much of the presence of god the word of god uh, even as we run to him uh, from time to time because the, we live in a challenging world uh, you know children in today's world uh, compared to uh, you know the past uh, or the previous generations you know they're faced with war terrorism uh, sickness uh, you know uh, divorce uh, there's marital issues that children are, are, are facing uh, single parents uh, there's crime there's rape uh, and rape that uh, especially in our country in our nation uh, uh, in the in the country of india you know uh, rape among children is so prevalent uh, there's a pandemic uh, there's abuse peer pressure uh, and social media which like never before has such a great huge impact on their minds uh, from a very young age um, just corrupting their minds their value systems a uh, lot of anxieties fear uh, you know mental issues that uh, uh, that they are going through um, also uh, you know uh, health issues obesity which is such a prevalent thing among uh, young children in today's world and uh, you know so the the world that we are living in the, the culture that we are living in today uh, is so difficult for even for us as adults and so much more for children uh, just as we need so much of help and counseling and prayer and uh, you know the word of god uh, we need to listen to god's word uh, children in today's world also need 
uh, you know, uh, the word to come alive in their situation, in their challenges, in their world, in their uh, uh, difficulties, because they are kind of faced with, uh, you know, what their teachers say, what the, the textbooks say, the science textbook says, the, uh, the world around them says, their friends say, and then, you know, it's here, their parents and the church uh, that is telling them something else, and the social media that, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, has a far-reaching effect on each one of their lives. So they're trying to cope up with so many different, different worlds, so to say, the small, small worlds. They're trying to cope with it and deal with those situations. And uh, they need so much of Jesus. They need so much of his word, clarity of his word, the truth of his word and the touch of uh, uh, Jesus. And we see that even Jesus, when he gave the command uh, in, uh, in Mark chapter uh, 16, verse 15, and he gives the command of... Uh, I hope I have that. Uh, 16 verse 15. Can one of you read that, please? Uh, Ma'am, Mark 16 and 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes, it says here, uh, every creature. You know, preach the gospel to every creature. It does not, uh, you know, mention specific ages. Um, but it says to every creature, which is inclusive of children, also the Great Commission that we read in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verses uh, 19 to 20. Can one of you read that, please? It's on your screen. Can I read, Master? Yes, sure. Thank you, Asha. The Great Commission, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And two, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you. So again, here we see that, you know, um, Jesus giving the Great Commission saying, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. So again, there is no age bracket, there's no age limit, but just go into all the world and make disciples uh, you know, of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We also saw, um, uh, you know, uh, the scripture, the promise of the Holy Spirit uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 28 uh, to 29, uh, sorry, 38 and 39, um, you know, again, uh, you know, uh, this promise of uh, salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit is given for your children and for all who are far off, everyone uh, whom the Lord our God calls to him. Uh, self. So we again see that, uh, you know, uh, 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 the baptizing, sharing the gospel, uh, even the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is no uh, specific age uh, given there in scripture, but it is for all people, for all nations, uh, you know, just baptizing all creatures, just sharing the gospel and ministering to them. So here we see that, you know, Jesus' priority uh, was to minister to children, uh, the gospel to be preached to children, uh, so that children can also be baptized and they too receive uh, the promise of the Holy uh, spirit so since uh you know ministering to children was such a priority for jesus uh it should be for us as a church as well uh you know so when we say that uh, uh children's ministry should be a priority uh, for the church today uh what i really basically mean is you know it should not be something that uh uh, just goes by, you know, who's available, who can take, uh, you know, share something, whatever the Spirit of the Lord leads you on the spot, uh, you know, or just do something or just occupy the kids, uh, keep them entertained. Uh, that should not be the agenda of uh, the children's ministry, but uh, uh, the children's ministry should be a priority for the church. Uh, when I say that, what I mean is it should be well planned, uh, well executed, you know, uh, you should have have a plan for the year, just like you plan uh, things for the adult church. Um, 
you know have a really relevant uh, curriculum for the children just like for the adult church you know the 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 the, the pastor the main pastor is planning uh, sermon series what to teach uh, you know they have everything ready uh, the powerpoints uh, you know the sermon uh, notes going ahead uh, uh, being delivered to people even before the uh, the sunday service begins you know just having a relevant curriculum to cater to uh, uh, each age group specifically targeting different age groups, uh, their intellect, their mindset, what they're going through in that, uh, that specific age, uh, what their area of interest is, what their need of God is at that specific age, um, you know, and what uh, and make it more relevant to the present day context. You know, um, we have some, uh, uh, you know, curriculums for uh, Sunday school and BBS, which uh, which was being used when I was, uh, you know, uh, a child, which is, you know, very outdated now. You can't keep using that over and over again, over, you know, decades of uh, a period of time. Uh, we have to, uh, you know, make the curriculum relevant for uh, the present day children, uh, their challenges, what they're going through, uh, you know, and uh, also use a lot of media because that is what uh, they are engaged in, what that is what they are uh, excited about uh, uh, they are using so you know uh, use media as well uh, have a good worship team you know have organized worship times uh, for the children uh, so that they can learn to worship God they can be ministered to uh, during worship just receive from God the presence of God and also have relevant activities uh, and programs uh, all that will enhance their relationship with God, that will build their faith up in God um, and will grow, help them to grow in the things of God. Basically, you know, very important uh, to have um, uh, a well-planned uh, uh, program for the entire year, something that is well executed, um, you know, um, uh, so, and also have a, a, a good curriculum based on the theme important to have a vision for uh, the children's church because the word of says the word of god says without a vision people perish it's so important to um, uh, to uh, just ask uh, ask God or just know what is God's heart for his children in your church you know what is the vision that he has uh, uh, where he wants to take them to uh, you know what is God's heart for them uh, and build everything on that vision you know it's it's good to have a vision so that uh, you know you have teachers who know that uh, you know who are committed uh, who know this is a structured program this is not something that uh, you know uh, i can just uh, come once in a while when i feel like uh, just minister but this is something more structured organized uh, you know where you need committed teachers you train them and also it's good to have this vision so that you know all the programs and all the activities that are planned falls in alignment with uh, God's will, God's vision, where He's uh, taking you to, uh, where He wants um, the children to be led. Uh, what is His agenda? What is will His will and plan for the children? Uh, and you know, uh, have programs and activities catered around that, and also a good time to look back at the end of the year to see. Uh, you know, to fall back and see how we have uh, pursued uh, uh, the call of God, the vision, where we are at, what stage God is taking us to, where, what is the next stage, just waiting on God. Uh, you know, it just uh, it just helps. It just uh, uh, makes it more structured. It uh, uh, and just looking back, also looking at God's faithfulness, uh, and also uh, seeing how God is basically building up our children, where He's taking them. Um, and also, you know, it's a good time to realign ourselves to uh, where God wants us to be and where God is taking us to. So, you know, if you are the pastor in a church or you're leading a house church, uh, <coughs> sorry, or you're leading even a life group, you know, and you have children come, uh, sometimes we just, uh, you know, kind of huddle the children in a, in a bedroom or uh, in the balcony and just give them some toys or some games and they play. But be a good time for you to also have something more structured for them. Uh, you know, what you're doing, uh, you can have something more 
on similar lines on for them so that children can also be ministered uh, to or if you are running a church you know these are some things that you would like to look at uh, take a look at and uh, build on these things and um, so that you know um, children are given priority and they are built up at a very young age a few things i'd just like to add uh, uh, part of uh, you know the biblical mandate or what we've been uh, talking about just reiterating is uh, that children are the greatest mission field uh, you know um, uh, I stated a few statistics at the beginning of the class uh, and we saw why it's important to minister to children. Uh, so just reiterating that children are the greatest uh, mission field. Uh, children are also Okay, uh, we already saw this, you know, um For all the people who made a decision for Christ, you know, um, uh, children, um, you know, 85% uh, 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 of them did so by the age of uh, 18. Uh, so we see that uh, children are the greatest mission field. Children also need a firm uh, foundation. The Word of God says in Proverbs chapter uh, 22, verse 6, it says, uh, can somebody read that please? Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, uh, the time we spend ministering to children, just impacting their young minds, their faith, uh, their journey, their walk with God is going to impact them for the rest of their life. Uh, because, uh, you know, the things that we instill in them as a child, uh, the word of God promises us that it will not be forgotten uh, when they are older. It will not leave them. Uh, if they will fall back on that, they will depend, they will learn and uh, they will continue to walk, uh, make choices, uh, and live lives, uh, lifestyles and values that are God honoring and according to the word of uh, God. So, you know, it's so important for us uh, to, uh, as children uh, in children's ministry, you know, to pour out these core values to children while they are still growing. Uh, so that when they grow older, they will know these values, uh, live by these values, um, and, uh, you know, uh, base their whole um, choices, their uh, decisions, their walk with God, um, you know, based on the values that they've learned from the, uh, tr uh, the, the truth from the Word of God. And also they are able to recall uh, the Word of God uh, in times or the narratives that they learn or who God is, their nature uh, in life, even as they go through struggles and uh, uh, challenges. Okay, uh, There's a reason, uh, there's a season, sorry, uh, in a person's life uh, when they are most open to learning what means uh, to trust God. So, uh, you know, uh, statistics show or uh, researchers have uh, said that this season uh, when people are most open to learning, uh, to trust in God, put their faith in God, build up their values is, you know, between the age of four uh, to 14 years uh, when children, you know, uh, are moldable, uh, then ever before during their lifetime, you know, uh, during the season of life is when the children, uh, we, I said in the introduction, you know, they are forming their basic understanding of the world, of their relationships, uh, uh, who God is, their love for God, uh, understanding uh, the values uh, uh, the world, the values they have to live by, their love for God. So it's a season also when children are easily influence uh, so we should be very intentional about uh, ensuring that you know during this season of life that is four to 14 years uh, you know they uh, get the right uh, uh, learning the right truths um, you know uh, the right impressions and they learn the truth from God's word um, and they they just don't learn it but they also know how to live out those truths practice those truths or walk in those uh, truths uh, so because what is rooted in the heart of a child 
is almost impossible to uproot in the life of an uh, adult. Okay, uh, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes, we read that, you know, uh, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter uh, under heaven. And I think that this really did not mean, uh, you know, it, it really did mean everything in the sense that, you know, it is uh, during this uh, season when a child is 4 to 14 years, you know, when this season when they need to focus, um, uh, you know, or we need to focus our efforts uh, or put in all our efforts and just helping them place their trust in Jesus uh, and, uh, you know, putting our efforts in helping them to have a personal uh, relationship uh, with them. So when, you know, this is rooted in a child, it's impossible for them, uh, it's impossible to be uprooted in their life as an adult, uh, you know, they can just fall back on these things, even if they go away, you know, these truths which uh, have been implanted in their hearts and their minds will come back to memory, God is faithful, he will bring it back, uh, he will help them you know, this truth will come alive to them at any point in their life when they're really down uh, in their difficult days and difficult times when they're crying out for answers, crying out for help. The word of God that has been rooted in their lives uh, will uh, come back, will bring meaning, uh, will also lead them back into that personal relationship or their walk or putting their trust in Jesus. So, you know, um, the season of life that is between 4 to 14 you know most people call this the 4 to 14 uh, window uh, so what we do during this season or this window between ages 4 to 14 uh, maybe the most important thing a church uh, does because just imagine you know if um, you know if every child in the primary section you know a primary child basically uh, in the in the primary child uh, would basically uh, uh, be needs to be grounded in uh, the love of god okay just to know that you know just like their parents love them or uh, maybe some of them are not sensing love from their parents but just for them to be grounded in the love of god for them just to know that their heavenly father uh, loves them so just imagine if a primary child leaves children's church with this deep assurance that no matter what they do no matter who they are uh, no matter what the situation is uh, at home or in school that they have a heavenly father who loves them imagine if this this truth is so firmly grounded in this child's life and this child grows up to be an adult you know uh, and they have faced problems or difficulties uh, you know uh, it would uh, this deep assurance in them would know that you know yes you know there, there is a heavenly father who loves me irrespective of what i'm going through the challenges you know uh, uh, and the child has grown up to be an adult would be you know they they would know that their problem will be solved they can get through this because they have a heavenly father who loves them or what if every child in the junior section you know left knowing that they can they can place their trust in jesus in every area of their um, uh, life so when a child comes to the junior level they basically try and learn to trust their friends learn to trust the world that they live in trust the people around them uh, so if they are grounded in this truth you know that uh, they can place their trust in jesus in every area of their life just imagine if they grow up you know, to be an adult uh, you know uh, what assurance this truth would bring back in their lives at, at different situations at different points uh, in their uh, journey through life or what if every you know a senior child a high schooler you know uh, left children's church knowing that you know they have a place in god's story you know that they are valuable that uh, uh, they are important uh, that you know uh, to god that they are greatly valued to god uh, they're precious in his sight uh, that their self image is not based on what people tell them what the world tells them uh, but who they are in christ um, and you know uh, they leave children's church you know and move into adults church just knowing that you know um uh, they uh, they have committed their life to one who's faithful uh, who holds them in the palm of his hands and um, you know they've committed themselves also to serving christ you know what a wonderful adult church we will have if we have all of these children who have grown up 
to adults, uh, the next generation in adult church, grounded with these truths, you know, uh, we will have less uh, issues to deal with, handle with in the adult church because, you know, these truths have been firmly grounded and placed in their lives at a very, very uh, young age. Um, so just a few more truths that uh, we can ponder on is a children's uh, ministry or children's church or Sunday school is not child care. It's not just for parents to say, hey, you know, I basically had a hard week, a rough week, you know, uh, I just can't sit in church uh, with my children around me, disturbing me. I just want to focus, enjoy worship. So, and so, you know, I'm just leaving them, uh, uh, just keep them occupied for some time or just thinking that children's ministry or Sunday school or children's church is just uh, you know, uh, occupying children, entertaining them for uh, an hour or so. It's not child care, but it's a ministry that, um, uh, you know, is the most uh, uh, critical time in a person's life. And, you know, uh, of early years, which is the formative years of their life, they need, they need to learn. So children's ministry is not child care. Um, also, some important truths is that... Uh, Children are not the church of tomorrow, but they are the church of um, today. Uh, like we saw in the Israelite co covenantal community, that you know, every time they met together, it was not just the older uh, 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 or the youth or the uh, young adults or uh, the older people, but it was even uh, children. So a family is made up of you know, older people like the grandparents, it's made up of parents and also children. So also, you know, the church is not just made of uh, grandparents, parents, teenagers, but it's also comprises of children because uh, church as an entity is uh, the family of Christ, is the body of Christ. And we are a family. So a family uh, basically comprises of grandparents, parents, and children. So, uh, you know, and children are part of uh, the, the life of the church, and so we need to involve them uh, in the life uh, of the entire church and also minister to them. Children are also the, you know, uh, now generation. Uh, let's look at uh, Psalms chapter uh, 78, verse 4. Can one of you read that, please? We've already read this in the previous class, but uh, one of you read that Psalms chapter 78, verse 4. We will not uh, hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. So we see that, you know, uh, often uh, people call children as the next generation. Uh, but if we equip children, uh, you know, in the present, in the now, and equip them, uh, you know, to uh, to see their calling on their life, to know who they are in Christ, what God has called them to, uh, the difference that they can make now, and also the importance of them receiving Jesus as the Lord and Savior, the importance of them uh, also you know, uh, 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 moving in the gifts of the spirit, you know, if we, uh, point, if we uh, just bring this truth across that, you know, they need to see all of this now in the present so that they can make a difference now in their lives, you know, what an impact they would make in the church, you know, what an impact they would make at school uh, among their friends. Uh, so uh, uh, ministering to children is so important because uh, it, uh, you know, um, it's important to give children the tools uh, they they need to make a difference now and not just in the future okay they can make a difference now they can minister to their grandparents they can minister to their parents they can minister to their friends uh, in school their classmates and even in their uh, neighborhood okay because we know that the kingdom of god belongs to such as these the kingdom of god uh, we see that even children are part of the kingdom of uh, God. Okay. So uh, the next thing is children are the future leaders of the church. So if you need to have um, a church that is strong, you know, uh, 
uh, we who are the present, uh, you know, uh, adults in the church, if we need to ensure that the church continues to be a strong entity, uh, a, a strong family where the word of God is taught, uh, where we can go out and minister and uh, to the people around, you know, uh, we need to ensure that, you know, uh, the children, you know, are built up so that, uh, you know, uh, they become the future leaders of the church and the kingdom of God continues to grow and extend, extend and, you know, uh, they grow into the greater things of God. They're not just going back to where we were at our level, but, you know, the church is moving forward, is moving from one level to another level. What if we don't teach children, uh, you know, the things of God? Then, you know, the church doesn't move to the greater level to, uh, to impact the world around them or uh, to manifest the greater glory of God in a greater degree, in a greater measure. Uh, they, they will go back to square one. They, have, they will start from where... Uh, you know, we began, they will not start from where we left off and move ahead and, you know, uh, climb up or move into the greater things of God, but they will fall back. Uh, this is what happened with the people of Israel, even though God had uh, repeatedly told them, you know, teach this to your children, the commands, the laws, uh, tell them when they are sitting, when they you're, you're sitting with them, when you're walking, when you're sleeping, um, they failed to do it. And we read that in, we read in ju uh, Judges that a whole generation came up who uh, you know who who did not know uh, the ways of the lord they did not know the lord their god and what happened to the the, the israelites they all went away uh, from god they started believing uh, they were started worshiping idols and uh, totally living the lifestyles of the world uh, around them it was such a sad state why because the the older generation failed to impart the truth, so failed to teach the children the laws. And so the whole new generation came who didn't knew the ways uh, or who did not uh, who did not know the Lord their God who brought them out of uh, Egypt. So, you know, it's so important for us still uh, the right truths, the values, uh, bring them to the level that we are in as adults, uh, in, the, in the supernatural, in what the things of God, in ministering, uh, so that, you know, they can take on to the next level and uh, progress the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God furthers and is, uh, uh, is, is growing. Uh, children also need to feel... Uh, uh, the love of God. They need to feel the love of God. Uh, it's it's uh, the children's ministry. Maybe the only time a kid truly gets to experience uh, God's unconditional love. So so important to raise up a generation of children uh, who love God, who knows God's love for them, who are grounded in that truth, who are living in that truth, and also you know um, uh, who are able to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. So why is this so important that they need to know God's love? Because if they do not know this truth, they don't experience it, they don't live by it, uh, they will begin to, you know, um, uh, 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 look for love in the world. They will begin to love the world, uh, the things of this world, uh, you know, get into relationships that are not right for them. Um, and so important for them uh, to be grounded in God's love. And so much so for our children in today's world, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, children come from various backgrounds where uh, the their parents are fighting, quarreling. Uh, you know, uh, the children know that their parents are on the verge of divorce. Uh, it's very sad to hear a, a, a child in grade one or, or grade two, you know, I forget uh, who asked the the, the the, the children's church, uh, pa, uh, the teacher to pray because, um, you know, their parents are going to get divorced. And just imagine a child in grade one or grade two just just so broken with this whole thought, who's able to understand what divorce is, what their parents are separating. So it's so important uh, for us, you know, to... Uh, to reveal God's love to them, teach them, uh, help them understand it, uh, also because, you know, uh, uh, they live in a world where uh, they are judged and loved based on uh, uh, how they look, 
uh, how they perform in school, uh, their talents, their gifts, um, uh, and we do not know what background they come from. You know, some of them are being abused physically, sexually. Uh, so you know, we need to uh, get them uh, into this relationship with a God who loves them with an everlasting love, and nothing can change or remove that uh, love for uh, them. So these are some of uh, some truths that we can, uh, you know, uh, build the children's church on, base our foundations of the children's church or the ministry on, um, even as we uh, minister to children or even as we oversee uh, children's church. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, Asha. Pastor, can you please explain about 4 to 14, something you're saying? OK. Um, it's called the 4 to 14 window. Uh, basically, you know, it's saying that this is an age group of 4 to 14 years, uh, you know, and uh, this, is, um, this is the most important, uh, uh, you know, a window is this opening. You know, small opening where we're able to um, see the beautiful view, uh, able to just get fresh air, just an opening into, uh, or also an opening into somebody's life, opening into somebody's uh, house uh, uh, where we can see through, uh, uh, you know, we could uh, uh, interact, uh, we can share things, give things. So, this uh, 4 to 14 window is, uh, you know, uh, what we do during this, this period of time between. Uh, of Age, uh, of children ages 4 to 14, uh, you know, is, is something that is the most important season uh, of, in a person's life that a church can have impact on uh, because, you know, um, uh, like I said, you know, everything that we can do in, in just sharing the values, the truths, uh, the doctrines, uh, basically building them up in their trust, in their faith, in their walk with God, uh, presenting the gospel, helping them to accept Christ, uh, also to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, reveal to them that the, the great commission that God has is also for children's life and getting them at a very young age to, uh, you know, evangelize, to share with others, to share their faith, to share the love of Jesus uh, with others. So this 4 to 14 window is uh, what we do during this window, maybe the most important thing a church does in a person's life. And this has an impact on them as uh, adults when they grow up uh, because when they're grounded in all of these truths when they come to adult church you know just imagine uh, how the church uh, um, uh, would grow to to a greater extent would move to a next level uh, or we we won't have people who are you know who don't know the basic who don't know the basic truths and we are trying to again teach them try to minister them uh, again from you know from the beginning but if they have known all of these truths at a very young age, they come to adult church, you know, it's easier for the church to grow to the next level uh, and to, to move from glory to glory or to move to the next level where God wants them to move. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Asha. Anyone else has any questions? How do we offer pastoral care in Sunday school since it's not... Uh, uh, daycare uh, so you mean uh, pastoral care in in the sense like uh, yeah like I said you know um, uh, you know having a, 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 a Sunday school where you know it is well planned and well executed where you have committed a team of committed teachers who are trained well uh, you know you have a vision uh, for uh, the children's church so you know where everybody everybody knows where you are going uh, they can follow through uh, and you can base all of your activities and programs uh, based on the vision that God has and of course the vision is not what vision you carry for children's church or the pastor carries for the children's church or somebody has but what is God's vision for uh, children's church and also having a curriculum uh, that caters uh, to the need of children, not just saying, okay, you know, let's begin by just telling them all the narratives from uh, Matthew, 
moving on. Well, if you use that, then maybe, you know, you have a curriculum saying, okay, what is the learning objectives? What is the, uh, the truths that you're going to bring out? Uh, how are you going to, um, uh, uh, you know, what are the th uh, theological truths that you can bring out through these narratives? So you just make a note, uh, uh, what are the different, um, uh, you know, activities, uh, creative things that we can bring about to uh, reiterate uh, this learning like object lessons or a game uh, to just engage the kids or some activity uh, and then what is the, the takeaway what is the application um, uh, how are children going to apply what they learned through this uh, through this narrative or to the story or uh, to this topic or you can just have a curriculum that is topic wise so you know uh, and also are these topics uh, uh, relevant to the children in your community in your country uh, what they are going through their age group is it catered to their uh, uh, you know, uh, to the challenges that they're going to, their developmental needs, uh, what they're looking for, uh, you know, so that when they come to church, they uh, they are uh, ministered to, they are helped with. So uh, that is what I'm talking about when we have uh, a structured Sunday school and not a daycare where uh, they just come and play with the other friends. They have some coloring or some storybook or they're listening to some uh, 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 some. Uh, you know, children related worship songs or looking at uh, a, a screen where, you know, you just project some uh, some videos on a narrative or uh, uh, some children, you know, doing some actions for uh, some of the children action songs. Uh, uh, you know, that is keeping them entertained, that is keeping them uh, you know, going through just for an hour, but in the end of it, has have they learned anything? Have they gathered some truth? So uh, that is what I mean by, uh, you know, children's ministry is not childcare, but needs to be more structured. Did that help, Kennedy? Okay, anyone else has any questions? Okay, uh, if there are no questions, we'll end today's class. Uh, thank you all for joining class. I will see you all on Monday. Have a blessed day and a, and a blessed uh, week ahead. God bless you. Thank you.